Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to continue discussing quantifiers. In particular, we're going to look at propositions with multiple quantifiers. And we're going to focus on what happens when you negate a proposition like this. So we saw in the last video some useful facts about negating propositions with single quantifiers. One of the facts we saw is that not exists x p of x is equivalent to for all x not p of x. We also saw a similar fact, not for all x p of x is equivalent to exists x not p of x. And we're going to use these facts in this video to negate some propositions with multiple quantifiers. We're going to simplify these propositions so that they don't have negations in front of any of the quantifiers. And we're going to use these facts that we proved in the last video repeatedly to simplify these propositions with multiple quantifiers. We'll see a few different examples. And let's get to those examples. So first example here is a proposition with three quantifiers. And I'm going to write the useful facts that we're going to use up here in the right corner. First fact, not exist x, q is equivalent to for all x, not q. OK, the second fact we'll use is not for all x, q is equivalent to exists x, not q. So we'll use these facts. Some of them we might not use on every slide, but there might be some slides where we use both. And let's apply them to this specific example here. So our example here, we have not for all x, for all y, for all z, p of x, y, z. So I'm spacing it apart here to make it a little easier to reason about it. We might introduce some parentheses in certain places. So it'll help to have the spaces. So on this first line, I'm going to put some implicit parentheses here. Sometimes it's useful to have the parentheses to visualize what the proposition is saying. Usually when we write the propositions, they don't have these implicit parentheses because it just would give us more to write. And since they're implicit, what's the point of writing them? But sometimes when we're reasoning about them, it helps to have those parentheses there to think about what part of the proposition is each quantifier referring to. So here I'm going to put parentheses right there. So this is just reminding myself that that for all x quantifier is referring to what's inside the parentheses that I just drew. Now the not for all x in front here, I'm gonna use one of the rules up here. Which of the rules would apply here? Well, we have a not for all x, so the rule two looks more useful. Not for all x, we can turn into exists x not. So I'm gonna do that on the next line. I get exists x not and then we have for all y, for all z, p of x, y, z. OK, and notice I didn't write the parentheses again because I don't really need them here. But I will put some different parentheses here, which will be useful. I'll put parentheses here to separate the rest of the proposition from the exists x. This is just to remind myself that we're done with that exists x. The exists x doesn't have any negation in front of it, so we don't need to change it anymore. On the other hand, the not for all y, that's a quantifier with a negation in front of it. We don't want negations in front of any of the quantifiers. We only want to have the negation in front of the non-quantifier part, this part. So we, we're trying to push the negation to the inside by modifying the quantifiers. And we still have a negation in front of this quantifier. So we have more simplification to do. 
the not for all y right here. I'm gonna put parentheses here as well, just to remind myself that the not for all y, it's referring to this part of the proposition, the for all z p of x, y, z. And not for all y, I can use the rules up here again to modify the not for all y. I can use rule two again. And rule two tells me that not for all y is equivalent to exists y not. So my next line, I get exists x, that part's unchanged. And then the not for all y becomes exists y not. Notice I didn't write the parentheses. I'm only gonna write parentheses that we're gonna use on each line because all the parentheses are implicit besides these parentheses for the P of X, Y, Z. We have to write those. So I'll put parentheses here to remind myself that we're done with the exists X and exists Y because both of those quantifiers have no negations in front of them. On the other hand, we do have a negation in front of the for all Z. We have not for all Z. And then P of X, Y, Z is what's on the inside. And this not for all Z, I can use my rule two again up here not for all z becomes exists z not. So we write this as exists x, exists y, exists z, not, and then p of x, y, z. And that's it. We simplified it. And now none of the quantifiers have any negations in front of them. So let's move on to the next example. Next example is like the last one if we replaced all the universals with existentials. So I'm gonna put my rules up here again. We have not exists x q, not for all x q, and these are equivalent to for all x not q, and exists x not q respectively. So we're gonna use those, or at least one of those. So we'll start with our statement, not exists X, exists Y, exists Z, P of X, Y, Z. And I'll use the implicit parentheses in a helpful way. So we'll put the implicit ones right there. We have this not exists X in front. We're gonna use rule one here because that's the one with the not exists x. And it becomes on the right side, a for all x not. I'm gonna put some other parentheses here. So notice I got rid of those original ones. We don't need them anymore. They're implicit. But we'll put some that will help us visualize some things. Here we'll put some parentheses. That's telling us we're done with what's outside the parentheses. The for all X is done. There's no negation in front of it, so we don't need to change it anymore. However, we do have a negation in front of the exists Y. We need to deal with that. I'll put parentheses around this as well. So we're just focusing on that not exists Y. And we're gonna use that rule one again. Rule one tells us that not exists Y is equivalent to for all Y not. So we get for all X right here, unchanged, for all Y not right there, that's our change. And then we get exists Z P of X, Y, Z. I'm going to put some new parentheses around this stuff. So notice I got rid of the original parentheses I had on the previous line because they were implicit. We don't need them. We we're only using them to visualize things, but I'll put some new ones here to help us visualize the next step. So we already dealt with the X and the Y. Those quantifiers have no negations in front of them. We have a for all X, for all Y, no negations there. Our first negation is right here in front of the exists Z. So I put parentheses there, not exists Z, P of X, Y, Z. I'll put this in parentheses as well, just to focus on the not exists Z right there. And we can use rule one again. Rule one tells us for all X, for all y, that part's unchanged. So the for all x, for all y, that's not from rule one. That's just from 
not doing anything. But now here comes the rule one, the not exists Z becomes the for all Z not, for all Z not right there. And then P of X, Y, Z. And that's the, that's the end of this problem. So this problem, we need to simplify not exists X, exists Y, exists Z, P of X, Y, Z. We need to simplify it so that none of the quantifiers had a negation in front of them. And this is it. So we move that negation all the way to the inside where there's no quantifiers. So now the negation is in front of the P, X, Y, Z. And we have universal quantifiers instead of existentials. So it's kind of similar to the last one we saw. The last one was a not for all, for all, for all. And it turned into an exists, 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 not. This was a not exists, exists, exists. And it became a for all, for all, for all, not. Let's look at one more example. This last example is uh, going to have different quantifiers. So we did a for all, for all, for all. We did a exists, exists, exists. And now on to the not for all exists for all. So we're mixing up the quantifiers here. Here's our two rules. So we're going to have to use both of these rules this time, even though the past two slides, we only used one rule on each slide, although we use the rule three times on each slide. So we start with the not for all X exists Y for all Z P of X, Y, Z. And we'll put the parentheses right here. The not for all X will apply rule two there to give us an exists X not. And then we have exists Y for all Z P of X, Y, Z. As before, I'll put parentheses here. So we're done with the exists X now. We're not gonna make any more changes to that because there's no negation in front of the exists X. We do have a negation in front of the exists Y. I'll put parentheses here. So not exists Y. We wanna use one of the rules on that to get rid of the negation in front of the quantifier. We can turn not exists Y by rule one, rule one right here into for all Y not. So that's what I'll do here. Exists X for all Y not for all Z and then P of X, Y, Z. Now that we dealt with the X and Y quantifiers, I'll put parentheses here. We don't need to change the X and Y quantifiers anymore. They don't have any negations in front of them. We do have a negation in front of the Z quantifier. We have a not for all Z. I'll put parentheses here. Now this not for all Z, we can use our rule two again, rule two. Not for all Z we know is equivalent to exists Z not. So we can write this as exists X for all Y. That part's unchanged. And then we get exists Z not. And then we get P of X, Y, Z. So let's look at what we got. So we found that not for all X exists Y for all Z P of X, Y, Z is equivalent to exists X for all Y exists Z not of P of X, Y, Z. So let's look at the relationship between these two. So we took each quantifier the for all X that turned into an exists X. The exists Y it flipped and turned in to a for all Y and the for all Z it flipped as well. And it turned into an exists Z. Notice the same thing happened on the previous two slides. Each of those quantifiers, when we negated the whole proposition, all of these quantifiers, they flipped 
from existential to universal or from universal to existential. And the negation, this negation in front, it just went to right here. So that's where the negation went, there to there. And you can see, regardless of what quantifiers you have, regardless of how many quantifiers you have, you'll see the same behavior for any of these kinds of problems. So that might be a shorter way to simplify it, to think about it that way. But you're also welcome to do all these steps as well. And I encourage it, in fact, because if you do all the steps, less likely to make an error than if you skip some steps. So I think that's the last example for this video. Thanks for watching. And we'll talk more about quantifiers next time.